Welcome back everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to use Video Leap to clone yourself. Regarding the last video, I didn't really expect to get that many views, mostly because it was made at the request of some of my fans from other platforms and it was just a small side thing, you know, nothing really serious or anything. But I guess since it blew up almost a year later, uh, I guess I'll be making it a series now. So let's just start out with the most common and usually most effective way of doing this, the mask tool. So you see I have my two distinct videos here. Each of these videos has me on a different side of the room. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take one of those videos, doesn't matter which one, and I'm going to drop it on top as a separate video within a video. So what I usually do now, this is just a little trick, it's optional, once you get used to it you really won't need to use it, but I decrease the opacity of the top video so that way you can see what's going on in both so you can properly edit it. I mean even if you get used to it, it's still a helpful tool. Now let me just add that if you're trying to make the video appear like two ghosts talking to each other or something, that was just a random example, uh, you could just leave it at that. I mean. It, if it works, I guess. And, and the best thing is that you don't even have to worry about the blending because the opacity already does all the blending for you. But usually what you do is you'd go to the mask tool, you'd go to linear, uh, you'd rotate it to where you could see both videos. Now let me just add that lighting is going to heavily impact this later on. So make sure to get some neutral lighting, no super dark, no super light, and also the clothes that you wear is gonna affect your lighting. Uh, I'll talk more about that later. As you can see, it looks good except for the lighting contrast in both videos. You can see an obvious line. One thing you could do to counter this is to pull on the arrow hedges of the line, as you can see I'm doing. But of course, if your two videos, if the two, say for example, if I'm, the two versions of me are too close to each other, it's going to do that. So that's not very helpful in most situations, but it does, still does kind of blur the line. You can still see an obvious difference between both the clips. So the best thing to do is to just manually use keyframes, because the lighting is going to change a lot, to adjust the lighting and coloring of both videos to make them as similar as possible. Now, if you don't know what keyframes are, uh, I just call them the little triangle thingies, honestly, just to simplify it. So, they're the things on the bottom right corner, uh, above mask, or above where mask is now. See those things? You'd add keyframes to the top video, of course, or the bottom, whichever one you prefer. It doesn't really matter. Um, and what you do is every time the lighting changes, you're going to want to have the keyframes because what keyframes do is they, well, let me just give you an example. If you put two keyframes together and the first one has a brightness of say 100 and the second one has brightness of zero and you put them at a distance from when the video goes from one keyframe to the next, it will change over time and it'll change smoothly. And if you're already somewhat experienced with Video Leap or have watched my other video, uh, you'll probably know this by now. So what you're going to do is you're going to use keyframes to over time change lighting to adjust accordingly to the video that you're trying to match it up with. And this can be a real pain sometimes. Even I don't get this sometimes. Because it, especially in... See, this is just a demonstration video. I'm not actually trying to make a real video. If I was, I would use a much better lighting than this because this is horrible lighting right here. Uh, but this is just a demonstration. You could always, you know, if you're actually trying to make a video, it'll probably be way better than this. If that is if you practice, of course. So basically just repeat that. Use keyframes to change the lighting and change the coloring and everything. It, this video for this one, it probably is not going to end up perfect at all whatsoever because, as I said, the lighting is just horrible. But again, it's just a demonstration, so it doesn't really matter. 
And remember, linear isn't your only mask option available. You could use other masks, such as mirror, rectangle, even circle in some circumstances. Uh, but usually linear is the most effective when it comes to this. Another thing that I might add is that using the blend tool can also create cool effects. Uh, I don't usually use it, but if anyone might be interested in using that, I'm just throwing that out there because it can create some cool effects. Like, I don't know what the heck this thing is here that I created. Now I'm going to teach you another method of doing this. I personally don't have a green screen, so for this I'll be using TikTok's subpar green screen filter. Um, if there's any other, you know, applications that do this, uh, you could use those too. Just anything that allows for green screen usage like this without an actual green screen, it'll work. And of course, once you're done with recording the video, I suggest screen recording it instead of saving it so that you could just get the TikTok logo out of the way, the TikTok uh, watermark, because that could be a pain. So now that we have our subpar green screen video from TikTok, we're going to use the chroma filter. We're going to use picker and then we're going to select the color that we want to make invisible. Uh, then of course you could always increase in, or decrease intensity. Uh, it doesn't really matter. This is obviously not going to turn out very good, but uh, it's just a demonstration. You could always make it better. So this obviously isn't going to look very good, so, uh, yeah, whatever, it doesn't really matter, it's just a demonstration, as I said. But, as you can see, it still works. And of course, always, if you have your own green screen, I suggest using that, because that will always be way better than any sort of digital green screen. Make sure to comment any techniques, tricks, tips, anything that you'd like to see in the next video because I will be making this a series. Thanks for watching.